Taylor L. Booth was an active Computer Society volunteer leader and a force for computer education and accreditation of computer science degree programs. The award that honors his legacy is accompanied by a bronze medal and a $5,000 honorarium. It is presented to an educator who has achieved recognition as a renowned teacher, provided significant education content, created a notable curriculum in the field, or inspired others to a career in computer science and engineering education. Charles Lyserson is a professor of computer science and engineering at MIT's Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. He heads the Supertech Research Group in MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Lyserson's research centers on the theory of parallel computing, especially as it relates to engineering reality. He co-authored the first paper on systolic architectures, invented the retiming method of digital circuit optimization, and introduced the notion of cache oblivious algorithms. At Thinking Machines, he designed and led the implementation of the network architecture for the connection machine model CM5 supercomputer. Lyserson has made numerous contributions to computer science education as well. He is perhaps best known as co-author of the textbook Introduction to Algorithms, currently in its third edition and one of the most cited publications in all of computer science. He was the founding workshop chair for MIT's Undergraduate Practice Opportunities Program, UPOP, which teaches sophomores how to leverage their technical skills in professional environments. By writing a best-selling algorithms textbook and developing courses on algorithms and parallel programming, Charles Lyserson has had immeasurable worldwide impact on computer science education. We are honored to present him with this year's Taylor L. Booth Education Award. For many years, Charles Lyserson headed the computer science program for the Singapore MIT Alliance one of the industry's first distance education collaborations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Charles Lyserson. Thank you very much. Well, I'd first like to thank my co-authors, Tom Corman, Ron Rivest, and Cliff Stein, who are the best textbook co-authors I could imagine. Samana Marasinga has been my partner in crime in developing the MIT Class 6172 Performance Engineering of Software Systems, where we teach parallel computing as an important way, but not the only way, to produce fast code. I'm deeply grateful to my department, the MIT Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department, for providing me with teaching leave for course development and textbook writing. And finally, I really want to enthusiastically acknowledge my students and colleagues for continually educating me over the years. At MIT, the students have a saying, trying to get an education at MIT is like trying to get a drink of water from a fire hose. Well, I have no MIT degrees, uh, but during the 33 years that I've been a professor at MIT, the MIT fire hose has educated me about educating others. I'd like to briefly share two of the most important lessons that I've learned. Before publishing Introduction to Algorithms, the MIT Press sent out our manuscript for reviews. My co-authors and I thought we had written a good textbook, and so we were naturally anxious as we sat down together to read the responses. The first reviewer said, and here I'm paraphrasing a little, at 1,000 plus pages, this book is too long. The authors present each algorithm in three ways, an English description, pseudocode, and a graphical figure showing how the algorithm operates. They could save space by eliminating the pseudocode. The second reviewer said, at 1,000 plus pages, this book is too long. The authors present each algorithm in three ways, an English description, pseudocode, and a graphical figure showing how the algorithm operates. 
They could save space by eliminating the graphical figures. <laughs> the third reviewer said, at a thousand plus pages, this book is too long. You get the idea, okay? Everybody wanted to cut one modality of teaching. Well, we stuck to our guns, and our textbook has now sold over a half a million copies. Our classroom experience at MIT taught us that people learn in different ways. The reviewers each had their own preferred styles of learning, but they were too quick to abolish other modalities. And that brings us to lesson number one. Good teaching respects the diverse ways in which people learn. I don't have an anecdote for the second lesson. It's simply based on my observation of MIT students. The observation is this. Not all students do well at MIT, but I've never seen an MIT student who was failing because he or she was not smart enough. Invariably, students do poorly for reasons having nothing to do with their cognitive abilities or what I'm trying to teach them. So lesson number two is, good teaching respects the emotions of the learner. About a dozen years ago, I took these lessons of mental diversity and emotions to heart. With management consultant Chuck McVinney, I developed a two-day workshop on leadership skills for engineering and science faculty, which addresses the human-centered issues that arise when leading technical academic teams. Chuck and I now facilitate the leadership workshop annu annually as part of the MIT summer session, and we have offered it in custom form at Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, Harvard, Purdue, and Singapore. To date, almost 400 faculty have participated in the leadership workshop, but it's a drop in the bucket. There are over 200,000 university faculty teaching engineering and science in the United States alone. I venture that universities could educate far more and better engineers and scientists if they invested just a little to develop the human-centered leadership skills of their faculty. Technical students need empathetic role models who will turn them on to and not away from the pressing challenges of our interconnected world. Thank you for this wonderful award.